his uh, his his Zoom platform or his computer ones. Right. So we move to the next slide, please. So um, uh, why why we are doing uh, this webinar uh, from the perspective of C and beyond? Um, we all, um, irrespective of which stage of our career we are, we want to know, uh, we want to enhance ourselves. Whether we are a second officer or a fifth engineer or a master or a marine superintendent or a vessel manager, whatever our position is, we want to always have a skill enhancement. How can we enhance our skills? Which is the best way of enhancing it? What is the final result of that enhancement? How does it help us in our career? How does it help us uh, in our uh, um, um, holistic development uh, of our personality? And, 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 you know, how does the industry then perceives us? You know, those are the questions which all of us have. Now, through CN Beyond, we help you to take a well-informed professional decision. And hence, through these webinars, and by calling people directly from the Institute, the person who is actually the director of the course, the person who will actually run this course through CNBR, we are trying to a increase your awareness from the best source possible, uh, who can tell you exactly about the uh, course. Um, through this, you can evaluate the relevance of the information for you, no matter where you stand and which essentially helps you to take a well-informed decision. So that's essentially the focus of C and beyond. And that's essentially why we are doing the uh, webinar. A couple of uh, do's and don'ts, please. Um, so uh, I understand you will have questions, enough and more questions. Um, you can submit your questions after every slide. Um, my request is that the questions should be only related to that slide um, because a lot of things will come in the upcoming slide as well. So, so you can submit the questions after each slide, but we will take the answers at the end or we will address them at the end. Uh, our focus is on you. Uh, try and ask general questions. For specific questions, we can have a one-on-one -on -one later on as well. And we will share the slides with you later on after the um, uh, presentation is done through the email as well. Right. We move on, uh, uh, Madhura. So uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Antonis and it's, it's, a, it's a great pleasure uh, to have you here, Dr. Antonis. Uh, he's the program director of this course, MSc in Shipping Operations and Management. He's done his BSc in Accounting and Finance from the Phillips College and MSc in Business Finance from Brunel University and PhD in finance and economics uh, from University of Durham, UK. He's been a visiting lecturer at uh, Cyprus University of Technology and previously served as a lecturer in other lo local universities and colleges as well. He's uh, had extensive experience, uh, I mean, not just into teaching and, uh, and not just into academics, but also into jobs as well. Um, uh, you know, in, in, in shipping investments as such, into shipping, into oil and energy, into foreign exchanges as well. And uh, he's been um, instrumental in setting up and successfully managing a, a number of investments for the uh, shipping sector as well. Um, he's also leading an information technology company uh, in his capacity as financial advisor and is a member of the board of directors of various other companies as well. So thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Antonis, for, for really accepting this uh, request uh, to be here and uh, present this okay, yeah. for us. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure, Gaurav. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here with you. Uh, but before I start talking, I would like our participants to to get a poll say, and see what's the mix of people that are following our seminar today. So we will adjust ourselves accordingly to what we will tell people and how we will explain 
our course and what the outcome of our course is. So let's give them a, some time to do the poll. And as soon as we are ready, we will start talking about, and I will explain to you everybody about my, our course, etc. Sure, sure. So we have about 85% of the person who have voted. And uh, let me stop it at that. Just for everyone to know, we are recording the session so that everyone else can uh, view it later on. And we are also doing a live streaming on Facebook. Um, sharing the results with all of you. So about 54% of uh, persons are top four sailing. That's our predominant uh, audience correctly, uh, currently. And about 14% of persons have settled ashore. And uh, about 32% of uh, uh, the audience is at an operational level sailing. So, uh, so that's the audience mix for everyone to, to see. Good. So we are having people on vessels sailing around the globe, most of them. Okay. So good. Thank you. Uh, so people, our uh, the Cyprus International Institute of Management has been created early nineties uh, by business leaders, and it's a non non profit organization. Okay. Over the years, our our uh, our business school has been getting acknowledged globally, and we have a lot of uh, awards given to the college, to our business school. Okay, and because we have attracted people all over the world for our courses, and even our our lecturers, our our uh, how I say academics have been called to attend. Uh, seminars for international seminars and conferences and even have a lot of our our people uh, being called in uh, restructuring international businesses and offering consultancy to big organizations okay i can see from the poll here that most of you have not heard about us about the our business school so I will take you through, I will give you further details about our business school and how it works, which is on the next slide. Uh, okay, uh, can we go back to the next slide? So our business school is based on three things, excellence, value creation, and innovation. So we are giving the best for people, the best knowledge. We are trying to give our students the best knowledge we help them to create value in what they are doing and also give them insights to innovative solutions and innovative practices in their business. You, as we go along, you will see from the structure of our, of our master's degree that all these three are embedded in one way, in another, or another in our uh, our uh, business model and our course. Okay, the next month we'll go to the next uh, slide, please. So, and these all of these three by, by you come through the modular educational model. Okay, and what is the modular educational model? The modular educational model gives students and people that follow our courses the flexibility. Okay, to get uh, uh, in short periods of time, which is uh, the semester, an 18 week uh, period, the understanding and to beat their, how might say, to beat their, their degree on their needs, which means that, for example, if somebody is, is sailing, okay, it's uh, on the vessel for our course, okay, you will see that our course, it is designed to cover everything you have to, you, you face every day on your work on a message. Okay. And it will help you get a clear picture of things, how things work and how can improve your, 
uh, your uh, procedures and your understanding of the, your work. Okay, so this is our the modular educational model. It is what we are trying, what we are using, what we are uh, we are uh, famous and proud of. Okay, now our as our college, our business school. It is a matter I go to the next slide. If you see here, we have we have been accredited and we have uh, recognized we have been recognized by international organizations. You see here, we are accredited by the Digital Marketing Institute, the CFA, the CYHRMA. Training, we are at the accredited international training provider, and also our courses are accredited by the governmental institution, the KISAT. So it means that we are we are accredited, and we, our courses are in, can be used internationally as uh, as qualifications. Okay, our business school now has eight, we focus only on eight courses, which are on the next slide. Okay, we have an MBA, we have business intelligence and data analytics, we have human resources management, we have our, my course, the, the shipping operations and management, we have financial law, business management, financial services, and the last one, which is the Master of Public Sector Management is it's uh, it's a local one. It has only local students because it is it has been designed for the local market. Now, from those courses, I would like to see your understanding what you believe our student mix is, and then I I will see if you get the target, if you get the the result. It will be a it would be good to know what you believe our student mix is. I'll encourage more people to probably okay. answer. We've got about 70% of you who have answered the polls till now. Another four or five. Uh, let's minutes. wait another one or two minutes. Yeah. All right, let me end the poll now yeah. and share the results. Let's see what the people think it's between 20 to 50%. Uh, uh, what's the right answer? Yeah. The right answer is the first one. Nearly half of our students are international students, but other, other uh, some courses have more international students than local and others have the other way around. Likewise, our MBA has a lot of international students. The same happens with our business intelligence. And also my course, the online shipping management is, is mostly foreign students that we have on our course. The other courses, it's a mix, some it's a nearly balanced, which means that that takes me to the beginning of what I have just said that CIIM is internationally acknowledged business school because people heard about us, saw our results, and we day by day or semester by semester or academic year as it goes on, we have increased interest from international students. Okay, 
Now, going on specifically on our my course, the online shipping and shipping management, which is the the next slide, Madura. Uh, our course is unique, innovative, and global by design. Okay, and we offer quality at an affordable cost. Okay. So we have designed our course based on our mod uh, modular system, the flexibility irrigational model. Okay, so we will cover all aspects of shipping and uh, and being and and cover all the needs of people that are taken on board our course. They say we have might we we have sailors, we have engineers. We have onshore staff for shipping companies. We have lawyers, we have accountants. We have a mix, a, a huge mix of people on our courses. And the reason we have this mix is from this design, okay? Because we have designed our course to cover everything in shipping from A to Z, okay? Now, we have our lecturers on the course are not academics. Some are academics, but they are, they are also professionals. What does that mean? It means that you will get the theoretical and the academic aspect of things, but at the same time, you will get the practical knowledge, okay? So if you, take, if you have the practical knowledge, it means that you will see things you do every day at, at your work if you are in the shipping industry, and it will help you spot things that you can do better, okay? And increase your, uh, go a step further in your business, okay? Our course, okay, as I said, okay, will help you with analytical skills also. That's what I've just said. The analytical skills, it helps you to analyze things you see in front of you on your day-to-day -day job. and help you advance in your company, okay? Now, our, as I said, my co our course, it's international. And currently we have people from China, Singapore, and either Asian markets, and even Europe, okay? And it's from countries, uh, apparently it's from countries that shipping it's in, has history, meaning that they are shipping related nations. Okay, we don't have, let's say, people from uh, a country that they are not in the shipping, either than sailors or captains on vessels, etc. We, the people we attract are for people that I am, that understand the shipping and shipping is in their DNA, in their country's cultural DNA. Okay, so. Our next slide says that, as I said, our model gives a comprehensive knowledge of things in shipping using the insights, which are the practical aspects of the work through our lecturers and our people that deliver the modules, okay? It helps you also understand shipping and maritime industry. Okay, and to advance your knowledge in ship management and ship operation. This is very uh, a good example, a good thing for people that like lawyers and accountants that are not hands on in shipping, meaning they are not offered on a vessel or onshore working on a shipping company. Okay, and we, we expect and we hope that by taking our course and finishing it successfully, you will develop your professional career and have a successful career in shipping. Okay, now, who can get on our course? Who will benefit from our course, which is our next slide? Before that, I would like to know, to understand your approach to getting on such a course. What is your purpose of 
getting on that course on our on a course on a master's degree. All right, I think most of the persons have voted and uh, the results are not a surprise. I think almost everyone uh, wants to do the course for career advancement. Uh, a couple of persons uh, yeah. answered others. Uh, if maybe if you can write it down in the chat window, what are those other things that you are looking at? That will be great. Okay, good. So now you are in the right place. You've made the choice. If it's the right choice, our course is the right choice for you then. If you, if you want to have a career advancement and get knowledge, which covers 90% of the people voting, you are in the right place because we, as as uh, we as business school try to attract people that are motivated, shipping professionals that are motivated, Madura is the next slide, okay? And want to have an advancement in their career. We also want to attract people that just finished their university and got their bachelor's degree and they in, in any field and they want to, to either have a career change, if I may say, or broaden their horizon of being a professional career, this is the place. So our course also applies to people because it, it's the design, as we will see later on from the modules and from what I have just said previously, it's A to Z in shipping. So a newly graduate that has no idea about shipping, can enroll on the course and get the best out of it and understand shipping at its maximum, okay? We are also people who are targeting people that are not in shipping. And this might, you might say, this is irrelevant, but believe me, it's, it's, a, it's a very relevant uh, point because people get in shipping without being, involved earlier. Entrepreneurs, like they have a logistics company, which is part of shipping, they also get into the actual shipping and trade. People that have money, meaning that they are investment houses, shipping, it's one of the best investments they can do to buy vessels and manage vessels. So we target these people and give them a good understanding of what shipping is, and help them go and help us have a successful professional career in shipping. Also, family businesses, a lot of shipping companies, a lot of shipping companies are family business. The grandfather had created the shipping company. It has gone through to the son or the daughter of the, and then to the grandchildren. The, we, are attend, we are trying to attract those grandchildren that have a family business and they want to take a, a better role, a more aggressive role in their business and help the, his, and help the continue what their ancestors have created. Okay, and lastly, we, are, we want people, we attract people and they will have a benefit people that are in site operations, okay? Complementary operations of shipping, like lawyers, accountants, economists, engineers, analysts, okay? That have a link in shipping via their profession, okay? So that's our, the, these are the people that we target. Now, 
the next slide says it gives you out the, the employment opportunities. Okay. The, having a master's degree in shipping operations and management open up your horizons. Okay. Both, I will, can tell you about Cyprus, which is the local market. As Cyprus is the, is the biggest shipping operations and ship management center in Europe. Okay. We have a lot of shipping companies having their business run from Cyprus. We have a, a lot of openings in shipping in Cyprus. Shipping is one of our main uh, business areas in Cyprus. But at the same time, having our, our master's degree can help you in your area or in other shipping centers like Singapore, Hong Kong, or India, China, UK, Germany, Denmark. You, it gives you the opportunity, gives you one, ex, uh, one additional tool to get in the maritime industry. And at the same time, get you at a high level and a prominent business uh, position. Okay. So having completed our course, by default, or if I may say, it's expected that you have in your hands a very good piece of paper or tool that will help you get a job either locally, you can make an application for local companies and believe me, there are a lot and they have openings every day, every day if you follow up their websites or the general job finding websites, you will see that we have a constant rotation of, busy, of openings in the shipping industry, either for onshore or offshore. Okay, now we have now we go to the next slide, which I will explain to you uh, to see what is our course now. We have explained, we have discussed our business school, our credentials, what we offer, and who we want to offer our course to. Now we go to the next step how do we deliver this nice course? Our course is completely online. There is a difference between now, with this means that you will do it remotely. You will not have to be present in person at the business school, okay? Also, there is also at this point, let me clarify another point. It's not a distance learning course. It's an online course. Okay, and I hope you can understand the difference between distance learning and online course. An online course is live. You follow the modules, you follow the lectures. Live meaning at live time, at uh, real time. On a distance learning, they send you a piece of paper saying that by the end of the month, by the end of the of the of the semester, you have to send to us this information. Then that's the difference. You don't have interaction, live interaction with the lecturers at all on the distance learning. Our course is taught online, which means that we have interaction. You will have an interaction with the lecturer constantly on a constant basis, okay? Now, what that interaction is, we have nine modules. The course is designed and we have three semesters of three courses every semester, which means that we have a, a, a course of nine modules, which are core, meaning that you have to follow all nine modules. There is no option of having select, select let's say I want to select computing, I want to select, uh, say, marketing or foreign language or whatever. It is a structured course with nine modules, and you have to follow all nine modules. Okay. Now, the modules are followed in three different ways. We have 
an online uh, live session, a three hour online session lecture, where the lecturer will explain to you the, 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 the subject, we will discuss with you the subject, okay? Then we have the next week, we have a Q&A session, so you will, you, the lecturer together with you uh, and uh, answer a Q&A question and answer. So analyze what you have been delivered in the first session. And the third week, you have to study by yourself and, and do an assignment, do uh, self-test questions and things like that. So you will, you will make sure that what you have been taught the first week, what you have discussed in the second week, it is knowledge that you have received and understood. Okay, and then we also have assignments and also at the end, you will have an exam. Okay, we focus, the last part, it's what we focus on, meaning the, the self-test and the assignments. At that point, you will have to interact with your colleagues, meaning that we, we are, very aggressive on teamwork and communication, meaning that you will have a lot of things to do between yourselves, between classmates. So you have to interact with your classmates to create, to do an assignment, to, to answer questions and things like that. And this will help you, and this is our aim, to help you increase your communication skills as shipping is an international business, meaning that by having good communication skills, it means that you can talk to people from India, talk to people from Germany, talk to people from China or Hong Kong or Singapore, and convey the information in a nice and correct manner. Okay, so like me myself, I'm from Cyprus. Uh, because I have a lot of interaction with people around the globe, I can communicate in the way that the recipients say, you people in India can understand what I'm saying and put it forward in your way of a better way for understanding. Likewise, you will talk to somebody in Cyprus or China or Germany or Denmark and you will convey to them in your way, in a better way, what you want to tell them. So communication is vital in our business. In the, in our, it's vital in our course and in the shipping business, okay? The course is three semesters, as we said, and it's completed in 15 months. The reason it takes 15 months is because, because it's spread, it's on an online, Okay, and some, uh, the semesters are, uh, are instead of 13 weeks, 18 weeks. Okay, so because they are 18, we get to, fi to finish the course in 15 months, right, rather than 12 months. Okay, and we have an intake in September and in January. So now we are running our January intake. So we are in the second semester. Now of the January, we start the second semester, and in September, we will restart and take new students, semester one. So we have intakes in January and September. So I do I'll go to the next slide, please. Now, as I said, our course is fully structured. It's nine courses, okay? It's the next slide, Madhu. okay, thank you. It's, uh, it's nine courses and they are split in three categories, analytical skills, leadership and management, operations, okay? Now, from your uh, academic and professional background, I would like to know what is your interest?
Right. I think we have a fairly good response uh, time. About 90% of you have answered and let me end the poll and share results. So it's mostly into leadership and operations. So out of the three modules we have. That was expected. Yes. That was expected, Gurab, because our audience, our friends here attending our webinar are on, on, on shore, offshore, meaning that they are traveling on vessels and they would like to show leadership on vessels and command and have a, a good command of their inferiors, meaning that if they are engineers, the engineers below them, or if it's a captain, the people on the vessel, and also be able to understand and have a good understanding of operation. You'll see now, from our from the design of the course here, you see that we cover this leadership and operations in a good manner, and believe me, in a very in-depth manner. Okay, if you see, for leadership, we have three courses. It will help you have a course leadership team building and crew management, if you are on the vessel to lead your people, environmental management and shipping, environmental and safety. As you, as you know, nowadays, everybody's turning to environment and we have to be careful how we do our business. And then we have marine insurance and courage of good policy. Most of you are on vessels, on trading vessels, not cruise ships, I suppose. You are carrying goods, so you will have to understand and know what your rights are, what your obligations are, or doing this business. Then going to operations, which is the next most popular, you will see that we have shipping operations and optimizing performance and analytics, so you will know how to you will learn how to optimize your business model. You will know how to manage your operations and your chartering. If you manage your operations, meaning if you are on vessel, managing the chartering operations, if you are at the offshore, onshore, okay? And then if you are onshore, port operations and logistics. You see, we cover, as I said from the beginning, we cover A to Z, of all business, of all shipping business, okay. And all these three, it's a mix-up. It doesn't mean that this is the where I have I have put down the program table, uh, grouping our modules in their character in their group like analytical skill, leadership, and operation. Normally, each semester you will have one from the analytical one from the leadership and one from the operation. So you have three semesters that covers all business in shipping and you will have, uh, you will understand, you have a, an even split of things. Okay, now who, as I said, our course, next slide, Madura. Our course is fully online. Okay, and this helps people that are on board traveling around because you will have to attend the lectures live. If for one reason or another, you cannot attend the lecture, the lecture is recorded on the platform, on the, on the business school's platform, and you can follow it up at your time, okay? So it, is, it helps you follow up easier you know, for those people that are in the ship, probably they will not have internet when they are sailing, or at the time when the lecture is, they might be engaged in uh, some operations on the vessel. You can watch it, watch it afterwards and follow up. The same happens with people on shore. If you have a family, if you are uh, work late and you cannot go home where, or you don't have access to the lecture, you can watch it later. But I, I should point out here that we give this grace, meaning that you can miss some lectures. And these lectures are 25% of the lectures, meaning that you can miss up to four lectures 
of each module per semester. Okay, if you tend to, to fail to attend more than four lectures, then we have to see how we make sure that you are up to the standard and you follow up the lecture and you follow up the module. Because if you miss five, it means that you've missed a lot of the module. And we would like to make sure that you are in line with other colleagues and you are in the same level, okay? Now, as I said, it's 18 weeks, 15 months, okay? And, as, and also all the lectures at the end of the semester, let's say when you will be preparing for your exam, you can watch all the lectures and have an idea what has happened. Now, who can enroll now? This is the, the, is the next slide. This is who can get on our course? Because we are internationally accredited business school, okay? Our students should at least have a bachelor's degree from an accredited university. Also, they should have good English knowledge because the course is taught in English. Okay, now a bachelor's degree can be a university degree, an academic degree, or a professional degree, which is equivalent to bachelor's degree. So if there, because there are a lot of professional institutions around, okay, if you are, let's say, member of the Institute of Charter Ship Brokers, then that is considered to be a bachelor degree. If you have a, 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 a professional qualification, let's say, from, uh, from uh, an engineering institution, that is equivalent to the bachelor degree, you can get on our course. You cannot get on our course if you say that I have been sailing the last 15 years, I have been sailing the last 20 years, I have the experience, the working experience. You cannot get on board with us if you only have working experience, okay? So that's clear. I would like to make that clear to you so you will understand. Okay, now, another thing here is that people that, next slide, Madura, it's, uh, okay, our course, it's at 8,000 pounds, uh, 8,000 euros, okay, and because of C and beyond, we have waived uh, your 50 uh, euros application for, okay, and also, you have to pay a 900 registration fee, which is non-refundable. So when you decide to say, I want to enroll, you have to enroll and pay 900 euros. But if you change your mind later on, this money are not refunded, okay? And then the remaining amount is paid in three equivalent installments, just before the start of each semester, okay? Now, for your information, nowadays, we have launched yesterday, I've just uh, told, uh, it's a new thing, we have just launched the other day, a scholarship program. We run these scholarship programs just before the intake of new students, meaning just before the start of the academic year. And we try and, and we try to give our students the, init the initiative and they help them to cover their, uh, their, uh, their fees and their uh, expenses. So we have la just launched yesterday on Friday, it was yesterday, Friday, today, Saturday, sorry, yeah, a scholarship where we offer a, sc a scholarship for people that apply on our course. Also, we have, uh, as, a, as, a, as a correlation with CN Beyond, 
Okay, we offer a scholarship to two people, 30% of the fees for two people that CM Beyond will suggest to us to get on our course. So if you are interested, you can apply via, via on our website and state that you have been introduced by CM Beyond. Okay, and we will offer people that two of you a 30% scholarship on our course. This is independent from the general scholarship scheme that we offer. Okay, if you want to, to, to get yourself for the 50% and the full scholarship that we offer, you have to enroll on that scheme and we will consider you against other people that have enrolled on the for that scholarship but if you say i i want to enroll and i was introduced by c and beyond we will have you in the group of people that have been introduced by c and beyond and and evaluate your application and give you a 30 percent scholarship, which is on the 7,100. The 30% is on the 7,100 tuition fees. It's not on the registration fee, okay? So you have to pay the 900. And if you get a 30%, that will be applied on your tuition fees, okay? So now, CNB, um, I'm done with my course. I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, Graf, yeah, if you have anything yeah. else to add and or to get. Oh, sorry, uh, we've missed the last, we've missed the last uh, thing, the last slide, sorry, excuse me. So as I said, we are a business school. We offer executive education, which is our, uh, the, the, the courses we offer. We have a careers office, we have a research office, and we can offer also like consulting services for companies, which is not applicable at this, what we are doing now on the webinar. On the webinar, uh, what is applicable here is the executive education and offer you careers office help for students. These are our business, uh, our services that we can offer you as it's a part of the of the model of the services we offer for you. Okay, so Gura, uh, it's over to you. Thank you from my side. It was nice telling telling you there what we offer. I'm happy to take uh, questions, Gura. Um, reverting to you to take the lead and tell me and get the questions from our attendees and try to answer them. Sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, uh, Dr. Antonis. That was a very comprehensive uh, discussion, a very comprehensive presentation on the, uh, on the course. Uh, and, uh, uh, and thanks for uh, giving that 30% uh, discount to the attendees uh, and then essentially the people who uh, enroll from CM Beyond as well. Appreciate that. Uh, so Madhura, can Thank you go to the next slide? So just so that everyone is aware, uh, while we bring, uh, you know, uh, universities to you, uh, uh, help you to evaluate the best uh, one for you, we also help you in your visa. Um, uh, for this course, it is not applicable, but in some courses where full-time uh, attendance is required, your, uh, your stay abroad, um, uh, financial assistant, if you want any loan, we have tied up with a few uh, uh, you know, uh, banks or NBFCs who can give you the best interest rate. Um, one of the very important part over here is the Forex remittance. So essentially, if you say, for example, you have to give 7,100 euros um, to the university, um, the Forex exchange charged by bank is fairly high. Uh, 
uh, we've tied up with a few institutions wherein there is a one to two percent saving on the transaction amount so which is fairly big considering the seven eight lakh uh, rupees which you spend about eight to fifteen thousand rupees is what you can actually save uh, using those uh, services uh, uh, so, so that's something which we could uh, assist you with as well so i think that that's pretty much it on the presentation side Madhura, you can probably stop the sharing of presentation. We'll go straight away on the Q and A's. So uh, just a reminder uh, for anyone who has a question to be uh, answered for us to take, please put it in the Q and A section. Please do not put it on the chat window because uh, you know uh, the, the Q and A we can take it uh, in a better manner. Second, before putting your question on the uh, uh, on the Q and A, please have a look. Maybe your question has already come up to the Q and A chat, uh, Q and A module. So just give a thumbs up, okay? So so just like the question, and you, the question will go up. And we know that this is a similar question which is asked by many participants. We can probably answer it in a more comprehensive manner. So this, the, those are the two requests from you. And with that in mind. Let me start taking the uh, questions uh, and I'll moderate the session. Uh, uh, the questions will be directed to uh, Dr. Antonis. If someone wants to speak, maybe we'll let them speak at the end. So, so that's what our request is. Uh, the question which came first and which has the most likes, uh, Dr. Antonis, is from Santosh Kumar. He's asking uh, why is the course name MSc and how is it different from an MBA course? Uh, you're on mute. Yeah. So the, the answer here, it's simple. Okay. And that it's similar. The MBA, it's a more generic course. An MBA is a postgraduate degree also, but it is also a prerequisite of the MBA is to have working experience. And attending an MBA, you are getting an idea or general idea about business administration. What we are doing here, we are doing an MBA, if I may say, if it's more understandable, in shipping, a postgraduate degree specifically in shipping. That's the difference between the two. We focus on shipping here not on the general business administration right and this is actually a question which is uh, uh, quite widely answered and uh, just add on to this that if you want to leverage the experience that you have while uh, being in the shipping industry you want to progress uh, in that particular field a shipping centric course is way more better in, uh, for your career than a generic course uh, uh, like an MBA. So, so, so that's my, my, my two cents turn it. And, and thank you, Dr. Antonis, for this. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, question from Pushpit. What about a full-time course if we want to come and study in Cyprus? Our course is full-time, but you don't have to come to to Cyprus to study because it's online. That's the differentiation from other courses. It's online. It gives you the opportunity from your home, from your office, from where you are at the moment to get knowledge and get a degree. If you want to do a face-to-face -face course, you have to choose another course in our business school. If you want to do an MBA, you have to come to Cyprus. If you want to do uh, uh, the intelligence, the law, you have to, uh, it's a, it's a full-time face-to-face course. And believe me, to, due to COVID, most courses are delivered online now, which means that in one way or another, people that were doing face-to-time, they are using our model, the, the online model okay so our our course is full time it gives you the same results and even better 
you get a, a, a postgraduate degree, a master's degree, but you have to do, you can do it from your uh, place. If you want to come to Cyprus, you are more than welcome to come to Cyprus and you will do it from your home, from your office in Cyprus. You will not have to attend, you will not have to come to the business school and follow the lectures. Okay. Thanks. Question from Abdul. After doing this course, we have to try it by ourselves or company will offer a job. And I'm sure this will be a, uh, you know, some a few more person would have the same similar question. So essentially the question is, what are the job prospects uh, after doing this course uh, and how in any which way the company, the, the university will help in getting a job uh, to, to the campus? Uh, okay, as I said, we have a careers office at the university, at the business school. Okay, and also there is a lot of uh, biz, uh, job openings in the local shipping industry companies. As a university, as a business school, we don't, we cannot guarantee that finishing you will get a job locally or elsewhere. It's your own responsibility to chase business. We can give you to chase job openings. We can give you insights where to apply through our network, but it is entirely on you and them to, to sign a contract of employment. Okay, now, because as I said, because our course is offered to people that are already in the business and people that have just finished their uh, undergraduate degrees, through our course, you might do a, create a network and get to know another course student might be working in a shipping company and might tell you, okay, I know you, we have been working together for the last 15 months. If you want to get employment in my company, you can come. So via the course, busy, uh, networking and, 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 and people that you will get to know on the course, even the lecturers, because they are professional, they might give you an offer or you might come uh, closer to a, a fellow student of yours, and they might tell you, okay, we have a job opening at this company. Make an application and you can get a job here. But generally speaking, you have to follow the job openings, the local company's job openings, or even the international job openings in, the, in this uh, sector, and you have to make an application. If you make an application to a company and they ask you for references, we are more than happy to offer references and even talk on your behalf on, on the, for the company. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A follow-up question from Pushpa that's almost in the same lines, except one additional thing. Any uh, visa requirements uh, or, or, or would you provide a visa uh, to the person who are doing this course? I know it's a distance learning, but but just to clarify any visa requirements, any provision for visa? There is no need to have a visa to study because you will start from your place. If the, our friend here, it means that probably he's talking about getting a visa to work in Cyprus. It's what I have just answered before. It's up to, if you get a job, a local job, if you get a made application, the local company and you get employed, they will provide you with the visa. I know that there are companies that also offer relocation assistance, meaning that if you are located in India and you get a job in Cyprus, they will help you relocate in Cyprus also, meaning that they will pay for your fees for transferring your goods from India to Cyprus and even offer you a low, uh, a low rent apartment for you. 
but this is dependent on the companies that you get a job. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll take the next two questions together. One is from Swaranand and other is from Shoe. This is around uh, uh, if they're sailing on a ship, uh, right, where the internet is a challenge and uh, and probably expensive as well. Uh, and you have a requirement of 75% attendance, which is essentially, you know, once a week you, a webinar happens and uh, a person has to attend at least, uh, you know, uh, they can miss maybe four only of, of them. Then uh, is there a solution for those persons who would want to do uh, uh, this course while they are sailing uh, and with low internet availability? In the sense of the graph, we, we tend to, to be flexible or we, we allow students to, to miss 25%. And as I said before, if you remember what I said, if for one reason or another, this attendance falls below 75%, we, we will intervene and make sure that the student follows up what he has missed is done in another way. Meaning that if he fails to attend five, six lectures, we might, the lecturer might tell the student, okay, in order to, to be sure that you've missed the lecture, but you understood the content, you have to prepare an assignment for me. You have to do this for me. So our borderline is 75%, but in, in the extraordinary case that we go beyond that, we find a solution but we don't expect to go beyond that okay i understand that's what uh, yeah hope that answers your questions around i'm sure uh, rahul's question is is this purely a thesis based uh, master degree master's degree i don't think so uh, but we'll, we'll... no 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 as i explained and it's modular you have to attend nine modules. You have to prepare uh, um, say assignments and exercises on nine modules, attend the final exam for each module. The only module that it is, if I may say, if I can group it on the, on the thesis uh, side, side, is uh, the research methods where students will be asked at the end of the module, rather than having an exam, to, pre to, pre to submit a research paper, meaning that you have to do some research in the background, either that would be theoretical or practical and present a paper, but only thesis. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, question from Ken. Uh, do you have any information on the graduate sector or business after they have successfully completed your course? Uh, at the moment, because it's a new course, it's just it's a, it's, it's, it's first year uh, of running. What I can say is that the students we have on board, they are all professionals and they have already seen a change in their career. Most of them have seen an advancement in their career, meaning that from what they have learned, they have gone back to their business, to their company, their work, and they have implemented new things and they have been promoted, even promoted to a senior position. Okay, we don't have, like you make, uh, you pointed their history people left our course and got a job. We don't have that because as I said, it's our first year of operation. But what I can say for sure is that, that all of our students have seen some positive results by attending our course. Thank you. Okay. Question from Abdul, can you do a crash course for basically the 15 month course in six months or three months, is that a possibility? 
that's uh, not uh, that's not plausible because we have the the it's not a it's a 15 months master's degree the what you are, what, our, what mr shah is, is saying here is to have as a, a specific course on a specific matter so for example take a course in in uh, in uh, crew management okay that's not plausible because we are offer a complete course okay question from shravan uh, is this online course equivalent to the regular msc degree with respect to, to every other aspect uh, also in other words would this degree yeah. be considered the same as the 12 month msc degree exactly it's considered to be an msc degree with all the accreditations it can go but it's 15 months right okay another one so it's an msc degree yes another one from pinak uh, will this online course be any different than the in-house course done in previous years as it misses in the interaction with stakeholders during meetings or seminars or even group projects which would provide a lot of exposure i didn't quite understand what our friend means here so basically trying to I mean, uh, see the advantages disadvantages of this online course with a with a course wherein you have a physical interaction with the stakeholders and the group projects and Yeah, but uh, the course here, you will have an interaction with your co-students, with the lecturers, with everybody involved in a virtual way. Like now, you will see a picture of the person that you are talking to and talk to him, get his uh, face, if, if I understood well, our friend here wants to see the reaction and the body language of people so it will be online it will be virtual okay what our friend here to uh, to take a step further if the course was distance learning then all of this would have been ignored would have not been present meaning that you will not have interaction with people you will not have their body language you will not have seminars, etc. But the online course, it gives you, it converts the face-to-face -face, uh, course to a virtual. You are in a virtual class rather than in a real class. Right. Okay. Right. Just to add on to that, Pinak uh, and others, I think look at it in this way: that uh, you know, if you do a full-time physical course. Um, um, uh, you know, you will have to spend at least double of what you are gonna spend over here. A, you will also miss on the uh, on the earnings that you would do right now in whatever capacity you are working. So, um, uh, so yes, uh, I think the physical presence, the the face to face interaction uh, is helpful. But also look at the cost benefit analysis. Look at what you're gonna miss and what you look at what you're gaining. And this is one of the very few online courses, like uh, what uh, Anton has said. Mostly are distance learning courses. So, so that's the advantage. Um, yeah. What is the course approving authority uh, for this course? Uh, that's a question from Bebhav. It's the, the course approval is the Cyprus governmental board of uh, studies, KISATS, it's known as KISATS, and it's approved. By having a KISATS approval, it means that you are at least recognized within the European Union. Okay, and if you are, I mean, it's recognizable, it is, it's approved international like i said now we have people from singapore people from panama and from india we have somebody from india that he is working currently in uh, i think malaysia and he will return to india that are attending our course so it's internationally approved it is an approved course 
no, there is no, there are no worries on that. Okay, thanks. In the next uh, two, three questions are on the same uh, topic and I'll take them together. So a master's uh, without bachelor's degree can, so by master's over here, we mean we have a master mariner COC or master mariner license. Uh, but we do not have a, a bachelor's degree. Uh, so uh, the question is whether they can attend. So um, if I may answer on your behalf that uh, uh, a master's degree, you can get an equivalency certificate, an equivalency bachelor's degree. Uh, and uh, that bachelor's degree, an equivalency degree, I, I assume, uh, uh, Antonis, that is, uh, that is sufficient. Uh, uh, for uh, for your enrollment uh, or, or for you to be considered for an enrollment in the course. Uh, is, is, is that correct, uh, Dr. Antonis? If the, if the course, it's the course they have, it is equivalent, it is considered to be equivalent to a bachelor's degree, then it is accepted. This, this relies, uh, relies completely on if the professional qualification they have, it is equivalent to to a, to a bachelor's degree. I'm looking now to find a, a, a table. It is. Uh, we can continue answering, and I can find I can find a, a table uh, as showing you, and I can share it with you and see what is uh, and. Uh, and they will show you what I mean with this, so you will get a better understanding of what. Right. So to do Swaranand and the uh, okay. attendee, um, I've had a discussion uh, with Dr. Antonis as well before. So a master's degree is accredited as a as a bachelor's equivalency uh, degree, and we can help you in uh, getting that certification from. From Bombay University, and once you show that, uh, you yes. will be eligible to to kind of apply for this uh, uh, course. So, so, if you are interested, maybe yeah. let me share my screen. Let me share my screen, Kurav. Uh, uh, sorry, let me share my screen so you will see what I mean. So can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Yes. So this is the, the this is the yes. the zoom in. Just a minute, I'll make it full so you will understand. You will understand. Where it is now? I've missed it. <laughs> Wait. You can see it now. Much better. Okay, this is from the SIP, it's the Charter Institute of Procur Procurement and Supply. Okay, this is a professional course. Okay, if you see now, it says the, the, if you are in the level, if you are in the membership, you are not eligible. If you are in the professional, if you follow, you have the certificate in procurement, the advanced certificate, the diploma, the advanced diploma and the professional diploma, then you get a professional license and you are, see, having a bachelor's degree. So if you are a, a, is the, if you are a member of the Charter Institute of Procurement and Supply and you are MC IPS, meaning that you have completed some of their courses and you have their license, then you are considered to have a bachelor's degree. Likewise, there are a lot of other professional uh, professional uh, uh, bodies, okay, which say here, if you see here, NVQ level six, that's the European thing. If you have these certificates also, you are, if you are, if you are professional, sorry, if your professional qualification comes under this, then you are, qualify. So I think now it's, it's clear about what having a bachelor's or not. Yes, I think it's clear to me. And uh, and, and if someone needs more uh, uh, 
uh, clarity, especially from the Indian space uh, as well, from the Indian context. You may please connect with the us once and we can help you accordingly. Um, for yeah, if they can send you the qualification they have, you can make a cross check and see if it is because there are a lot of qualifications and it's impossible for us to know now which is what. So if we have specific one, I'm happy to review myself or uh, you or RC and beyond Gurav before making an application, make a cross check and see if it's eligible or not. Sure. All right. We move to the next question. Uh, this is from Kem again. Some universities have courses which are requiring thesis at the end. However, the course do not require thesis. What uh, uh, difference does it make to complete a course with thesis or without thesis? Yeah, what I'm saying, I've said that, I've responded to this. Our courses are exam based. The, uh, the, the, the majority of our courses on the, on the, on the, of the majority of the modules on our course are exam based, except for the last one, which is the research methods in shipping, which is thesis based, meaning that you have to provide a research paper on what you have learned. And you can use a research paper means that the knowledge you get, you got in the previous modules, meaning that if you are interested in crew management, if you are interested in port logistics, you will use that information given the tools you received from the last module, which is the research method, which effectively will help you, it will give you an insight how to contact, contact research, create a research paper. That's the thesis, which is part, it's one module of the course. Right, right. Um, I don't know if I was clear on that. No, I think uh, you were, I think uh, Kev wanted to ask that, uh, you know, how does this thesis help? Uh, and and uh, in, in the completion and and I think that that's a course uh, um, uh, you know mandate most of the courses especially at the master's degree would like to a uh, person to have a whole rounded approach and not just a uh, um, you know um, you know read and uh, kind of deliver kind of an approach so so that's why most companies would prefer to have a for a person who is more rounded in the personality and most courses at the postgraduate level require a thesis. So, so that's that's just, just to add on to that uh, what Dr. Anthony said. Uh, yeah. as doctor, uh, you, you, you can maybe stop sharing your screen as well. So maybe uh, the next question we can take. Yeah, okay. Uh, we've got a question from Indranil. Should IELTS required have to be academic one or even general training one is accepted? So, okay. The IELTS is English language. Yeah, yeah. I don't know sure. what the general training is. Correct, correct. So IELTS is only one, uh, uh, I assume, uh, Indranil, if you have any other uh, thing, maybe you can just write it down or you can connect to us. Uh, IELTS is a fairly straightforward uh, English proficiency test, uh, uh, which, which we know of. Uh, Indra Neel is saying there are two types. Uh, um, do you have any view on this, uh, Antinous? Uh, two types of IELTS and which one needs to be taken? No, it's a IELTS. The, yeah, it's, a, it's exactly what he said. There are two types of academic. If you have to study, the, it is uh, not immigration. No, 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 no. I, there is no IELTS for immigration. It's IELTS, IELTS. It's an English language proficiency. And you take it for your studies or for immigration. If you want to, I don't know. I don't see why our friend here has uh, put in immigration. I don't know. Probably there is a mixed up. 
to my understanding, IELTS is like TOEFL, like IGSC, like uh, first certificate, like there are a few equivalent to IELTS, pro English, pro English language proficiency uh, exams. It's, it's purely for English proficiency that we you have IELTS. Send you a link to the IELTS as well so that you can uh, probably go to the uh, correct one. And then maybe we can discuss this one-to-one uh, -one as well. So Sunil, is there any alternative uh, which can be accepted in lieu of bachelor's degree? That is diploma plus class one. So Sunil, class one COC is, uh, uh, is equivalent to a bachelor's degree. And, and basis that we should be able to consider. We, we, we can, of course, stay, I'll, I'll take this separately with Dr. Antonis and, and, and advise all of you as, as well. So, so the issue okay. is the, with persons who are not having a class one COC, uh, um, uh, for them, uh, they may not be able, and if they are not a graduate, they may not be able to apply. But they can apply maybe through by doing MICS and becoming a member and all. Maybe they, they can take that route as well. Uh, right. Uh, next okay. question from Pushpet What is the scholarship amount? Uh, I think uh, what Dr. Antonis mentioned 30% of 7,100 euros uh, and 50% of 7,100 euros. So that's the scholarship amount uh, which will available to you. To, yeah, it's just a, a multiplication. It's two thousand one hundred, I think, for the seven one, uh, for the thirty percent. Then it goes to three thousand six hundred for the fifty percent. Okay. Question from Ranjit. Uh, last two three questions remaining. What is the job score for a MEO class one from India after this course? So MEO class one is a chief. What is an MEO? So, so it's a, a chief engineer's license. So that's the highest license that a chief engineer uh, uh, or, or an engineer uh, ownership achieves. So he's a, he has an engineer's degree plus okay. he has a competence of working as chief engineer. Okay. So oh, okay. All right. Uh, well, it, 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 uh, there is no real answer on this. Uh, uh, but what I know for sure, our friend uh, Renji will not be uh, offshore for his whole, whole life. Meaning that at some point he will uh, he will like to get off the vessels and and settle onshore. So by having a degree, uh, a course like this, and having a master's degree on top of his engineering thing, it will help him stay in the industry, shipping industry, but from a position different, and but for a position onshore, meaning that at the office and not on the vessel. So it, at some point he will get off the vessel, he will embark, so he will be looking for a job. If he stays for with his engineering degree, uh, his engineering cloud, his MEO, then he limits himself, if I may say, on a on a job, an engineering job. But if he gets the, degree, the our master's degree, he will be able to join other departments of the company, of a shipping company, so he will have more opportunities for a job. Right. Rather than stay on the technical aspect of a, of a, of shipping right right so i, I think uh, ranjit raises my discussion with uh, dr antonis it was like a lot of um, you know uh, companies ship management hub of europe is in cyprus and a lot of companies require people and they approach the institute uh, for any good talent and uh, that opportunities are something which uh, uh, which which the institute has seen and that's the main reason why uh, they have started this course. And once those opportunities come, uh, they will spread it among their students and you can uh, apply, uh, you can leverage uh, the network of the institute and uh, possibly get a fair job uh, at, at that place. 
this is a good question from Indranil. How are the final exams conducted? Is it via online platform or via assignment submission? Yeah, the, the, the final exams are conducted online via the platform. Uh, uh, Moodle, specifically Moodle platform, where you have, a, for example, you might have a multiple choice paper where you will answer your online and have an essay type question where you will have to we get question coming on the screen and you will have 45 minutes if i if i may say for example to answer that question okay the assignments assignment submissions are part of the interim evaluation of the course like the midterm exam might be an assignment so as you go along, you will have to present assign to make assignments for the lecturer for the module. The lecturer will receive them and mark them. But the final exam, it's online. It might then and the format depends if you have uh, multiple choice or essay questions. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, to answer Mandar's question, I'll probably take that question. Uh, uh, how do you get an equivalency degree? It's from Mumbai University. Um, you can connect with us. Just drop in a email to education at the rate three and beyond com, and I'll be able to with that. Question from Captain Zach: uh, Any additional fees for semester exams? No, no, no. There are no fees. You just pay. What I've just uh, explained before, okay. 8,000 euros. Uh, Laksh question, uh, he has class four MEO and he'll be soon giving class two uh, MEO. Can I be able to attend the course? Yes, Laksh, you can. You are an engineer. You have an engineering degree. Basis that you can attend the course. Uh, the class four and class two are just an additional quality. Uh, question from Ranjit. Most Cypress companies would prefer Cypress nationals or European uh, due to visa regulation and the present COVID situation. So the scope, what's the scope for Indians to get a job uh, with their online course with no visa? Yeah, uh, 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 Mr. Ajit, I can assure you that this is not valid because from my experience, like for example, MSC Shipping, the biggest German shipping company, employs in Cyprus. The majority of people that are employed in Cyprus are from Asia, India, Philippines, and Malaysia. So if you are good, meaning that if you have the qualifications and if you have the ambition and if you are have the personality you can apply and you can get a job irrespective on your irrespective of your nationality okay and believe me people from india are, and philippines okay together from sri lanka are considered to be high quality ship engineers and and, and onshore people for uh, offshore meaning that on vessels uh, work on vessels so don't uh, don't put yourself in a second class by saying that companies will prefer europeans or cypriots companies if you are good enough they will consider you and they will do what it's needed to get you on board, meaning they can issue you the visa and even give you a, a good uh, payment package to be with them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andres. Final last question from uh, Laksh, uh, the process of uh, getting a scholarship. The process for getting a scholarship is just to log on our website, okay? Make your application, make your application, 
uh, online application, there is an application form to fill in, attach your qualifications and say that I'm interested. There is a box on the application where it says either you can tick and say I'm interested for your scholarship program or write because if you are uh, if you are if you are making an application by CNBO, if there is a box below that, I will and write your comment. Say I would be like I would like to be considered for the CNBO scholarship award. It's simple. Lux, yep. we can help you. Okay. With the application process as well. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, Thank you everyone for uh, for your time and and, and really thanks uh, Dr. Antonis for for taking uh, uh, your your time off and answering each and every question uh, in a very comprehensive manner. It was my pleasure. Right. So um, the question on uh, would you be interested to attend the course? Uh, uh, you probably missed on adding another point on maybe if you need any more information uh, as well, you can put it on yes and, and you know, we can connect you if you need any more information to evaluate uh, whether you would want to attend this. So, so, so just put it on yes and we'll connect with you. I'll look forward for as many responses as we can, please. Uh, we've got about 40% of you who have answered uh, request more people to maybe just put yes and no, or both are equally good uh, you know, option, whatever you feel like. Wait for another 10 seconds for, for all of you to answer. So let me end the poll and uh, about 75% of you do plan to take this course, so which is um, quite good. And this is for the person who would like to enroll for the course. Uh, um, you know, do you want to take this this year, which is probably September, um, next year, which is January, or you're still probably contemplating, uh, you know, you're not, not sure when you would want to take this uh, course. Yeah, I think that's fine. So, so a lot of you are not sure on when you would want to take this course on. Uh, a few of you want to take it this year and some next year. And a final feedback poll on the webinar as such, a feedback on did you like the webinar? Were your expectations met, uh, unmet or, or exceeded? And was the session useful for you? And how would you rate the session? Average, good, excellent. There are three polls uh, which we have. I'll uh, look forward to as many responses as we can. If there are any uh, improvements that you would have loved, uh, liked us to have, uh, please uh, uh, please write that as well in the chat window. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep this poll open. Meanwhile, there are two questions which have come. Uh, C waiver, you can write down your question, whatever your question is. There is a one from Shoaib. If a person joins the course during it and cannot continue with the course, um, can he continue after sign off? So essentially what he's saying is, uh, Shoaib is saying is that he's doing the first module and he, for some reason, he's unable to continue. Maybe his sailing got extended. He's not able to give enough time. Um, what happens then? So, so that's a uh, short question. This is, uh, this, this is, we don't expect to have this story on our course, but if it appears, we will look into it. Okay, we tend to get students that they will start when they enroll and they will finish exactly after 15 months. If for one reason or another, 
the the student wants to put it on hold, meaning that after finishing the first semester, wants to put it on hold because of something and continue uh, later, we can't talk about it. But we have to have in mind that the courses, the semesters are offered once a year. So if he enrolls in September, starts in September, he does the first session, the first uh, semester. The second semester will be only offered at the earliest 12 months later. So you will have to wait for a year to get on the second semester. Okay. Yep, thanks. That's thanks. what, you know. Yep, thanks, thanks. So it's, it's a case to case uh, thing. Um, see, waivers, I think uh, this is not the right platform for the question that you have. Uh, you can take it uh, in another uh, offline manner. All right, so I, I think uh, that's that's pretty much uh, it uh, that we have. Uh, um, gratitude, thank you to all the attendees. Uh, you stayed for almost two hours. Uh, you had a lot of questions, um, a lot of curiosity around uh, the institute, around the course, around uh, the location. And all of them has been answered in, in from directly from, if I may say, the horse's mouth directly from the course director. Um, so thank you, thank thanks all of you to uh, for, for your attendance. Uh, thank you, Doctor Antonis, for for your time. Uh, it was my pleasure. Thank you, and uh, thank you so much, Madhura, for for really helping us uh, uh, in, in in conducting this. Uh, uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Antonis. You are welcome. It was my pleasure, and I'm happy. I will be happy to answer any questions.